Are the Astro Chickens Ready to Hatch? By Isaac Arthur, NSS President. Read by Isaac Arthur. One of more common topics I discuss on my show is interstellar exploration, and that conversation tends to include von Neumann probes, such as Freeman Dyson's Astro Chicken. It's a concept well known in space exploration circles, a relatively simple probe with a little brain and a self-replicating capacity. When arriving in a nearby star system, it lands on some asteroid or moon and makes copies of itself to send to the next wave of solar systems. Dyson's Astro Chicken features a roughly 2.2 pound, 1 kilogram egg that protects the cargo during the long interstellar flight, then hatches as it nears the star by unfolding the shell into solar panels. They are propelled by ion drives and other systems allow them to observe, report in, pick a suitable interstellar nest, and begin laying more eggs. Astro Chickens were recently on my mind. I'm an early reader for my friend Dennis E. Taylor, a New York Times bestselling author best known for his Bobovore series. The books chronicle the life of Bob, whose cryopreserved brain gets digitally uploaded into a von Neumann probe, and who is sent to another star system to lay the groundwork for a future colony. It's a great series and full of genre-savvy jokes and scientific realism, but while reading I'm prompted to ponder why these would need to be interstellar probes, it would seem to make more sense to field test the self-replication process inside the asteroid belt or the Kuiper belt, offering flight times of less than a decade as opposed to interstellar journeys. If this makes sense, is the future of robotic exploration of the solar system filled with astro chickens? If so, how close are those to hatching? It may be the future of self-replicating machines is likely to be an ecosystem, not an organism. Divorced and specialized robots will be produced by a factory bot for making simple bots, not by those specialized robots themselves. In the solar system, these prototypes should not be completely autonomous in order to assuage concerns about out-of-control, self-replicating nanotech grey goo ravaging our planet or another. A problem with sending out autonomous von Neumann probes is that one must always worry that light years from home and observation they might mutate and then come home for a visit. While the movie Star Trek The Motion Picture had its flaws, the antagonist, Viger, was brilliant. Viger was a returning Voyager probe that mutated into a dangerous, omnipotent being whose core goal was to eliminate inferior biological species. Drawing a rough analogy to this discussion, if humanity isn't careful with today's AI technology, people could end up in trouble. It is my opinion that AI technology is advancing fast enough though for many to be able to start seeing self-replicating probes within a generation. AI itself is not the limiting factor, the hardware is. While people tend to picture the self-replicating nanobot as analogous to a biological cell, Eric Drexler's larger banking self-replicator, a machine that relies on conventional large-scale technology as opposed to some future microscopic nanotech to function, is probably closer to what should be considered. This kind of technology, while perhaps not as glamorous as nanotech, has a lot going for it. It could prototype General Purpose in situ Resource Utilization ISRU, off Earth at scale, for example. Such technology could create fuel depots or mineral extraction machines on the Moon, Mars, or asteroids. More advanced versions could fabricate large telescopes in space, instruments so immense they can only be built off-Earth. They might be autonomous in operation, self-maintaining, and self-repairing. For reaching interstellar distances, designs like the Astro Chicken, which would use a solar collector to feed an ion engine, and the Solar Moth, a spacecraft that uses parabolic mirrors to focus light from the local star on some propellant tank, offer very simple propulsion systems, using drifting rock or ice as propellants. Closer to home, this kind of autonomous, self-feeding technology would be quite useful for creating rovers on site on the Moon or Mars that could gather resources for base construction or processing into fuel. Speaking of rovers, wheels have been the preferred mode of system, but should they be? As I was watching my five-year-old son imitate our chickens this morning on my small farm, it struck me that something with stick-like robot legs might be easier to self-replicate or produce with a smaller ISRU supply chain. Perhaps someday we'll see astro chickens wandering airless alien landscapes, pecking for samples or minerals and creating, from the humblest origins, new frontiers for humanity. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. 
Again, this is Isaac Althor, President of the National Space Society, and on behalf of the NSS, I want to ask you to check out Ad Astra, our quarterly magazine bringing you articles and stories from some of the best minds in space. 